strong local retail sales. Rip, Tito and Boweni. Johnson & Johnson, smooth dividend operator. Bites, opportunity perhaps. Two part already at 20 billion. And Sassel, still a horror show. This is JC Direct, episode 607 for 17 October, recorded just ahead of Market Open. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by JustOneLap.com. I want to kick off with uh, retail sales. As I say, strong data came out on uh, Wednesday for the retail sales, and it, 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 it talks to a story that we know and understand. I mentioned in the intro there, the two-part system is already at 20 billion. Expectations was that we were going to get about 40-ish or maybe 50 billion of withdrawals in the first year, six weeks, 20 billion. Uh, It's going to be more than we anticipated. And that money, it's going to be saved, uh, used to pay down debt, and spent. Now, data is suggesting it's been used to pay down debt. That does seem to be one of the the, the big uses for it. Uh, Saving, maybe. Uh, Spending, certainly that's the other. So he has the retail sales year on year. Every chart for the rest of our, well, for many more decades is going to be damaged by those two spikes that we see uh, first on the downside from the pandemic and then the upside, the recovery from the pandemic. But what we can see, and if we zoom in to a recent, more recent period, uh, 22 was not so bad. 23 was really, really a tough time. And we've had a nice bit of a trend the last couple of months in terms of retail sales. And that that's really important. Uh, 3.2% up. Uh, it was 1.7 for July, so 3.2 was the August number, and it, it certainly it's ex- exceeding expectation. Expectation was 2.1 percent, so 3.2. We're seeing it. We're seeing it in the shares that are running. We're seeing it in the the, the results that will start to come through. Those results more sort of like the year end December. The ones that are coming through from August are still going to be a little bit tough, but. The trend is there, and it's hugely important, and it is going in the right direction. And more than anything, that is absolutely what matters. It is a a, a great uh, recovery, albeit, let's be clear, off a very low base. You know, this isn't like we're recovering from highs. We are recovering from uh, quite low levels. But the consumers out there... I've told this story so many times. It is the two-part. It is lower interest rates, although hmm, not by much yet. It is lower inflation. Things are just looking better for the consumer out there, and it matters. It absolutely matters. And uh, it's going to come through in numbers. It's going to take a little bit of time in some places, but we are going to see it coming through in numbers, and that is that. that's what, what really matters and how we're going to sort of get – I want to say the economy looking better, and and that's not an an you know it, it, certainly consumers are an important part of our economy. There's a lot else that is also important. And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, for example, manufacturing, mining, financials, all of that. But it certainly is an important point, and it certainly will start to get our economy a lot better. We've got results later today, assuming you're listening on Thursday the 17th. We've got a power hour with Professor Adrian Seville, either live at Rosebank, the Standard Bank head office in Baker Street, or webcast. Uh, 29 October, we have then got uh, how to list an AMC. So this is for asset managers, money managers, fund managers who want to list an AMC. And then not yet on screen, but will be coming up. It will be loaded later today, 21 November. SA Inc. is booming. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, as I mentioned a moment ago in the retail sales, is there still value to be had? Just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking. Tito Titus Mbaweni, rest in peace, good sir. Uh, known for many things. Most recently, he's a, a, a Twitter chef who uses more garlic in a single meal than many of us might have in a year. Uh, prior to that, he was a finance minister. Uh, President Ramaphosa got him back into uh, a, a sort of active uh, a duty, I suppose, in a sense. Prior to that, for a decade, he had been our eighth uh, South African Reserve Bank governor. And prior to that, in the Mandela cabinet, at the age of 35, he was appointed as Labour minister. 
the finance minister was a tough spot. He did a great job there. He didn't enjoy it. He didn't want to come out of retirement. They really had to twist his arm. Uh, as Reserve Bank governor, he was excellent. What he did was he kind of, I mean, he formalized the process. You know, these meetings that we have uh, twice every two months, the MPC meetings, televised, that never used to be how it happened. How would the repo rate and hence the prime rate change? Well, the finance minister or whoever, I suppose the Reserve Bank, somebody would just sort of issue a press release and we would hear about it on the radio or read about it in the newspaper. He really did sort of institutionalize the Reserve Bank and the MPC. And he did an absolutely brilliant job there for then uh, the following uh, governors who, fought, who came after him. But I think it was also as Labour Minister where perhaps his biggest mark. So I mean, he brought in, for example, the CCMA. He brought in you know, occupational health and safety uh, for workplace, for mines. He brought in things like <laughs> legislating lunch hours, you know, 40 hour weeks. I mean, all of those sort of things which hadn't been legislated before. Now, a lot of folks will say, yeah, but he gave us labor laws, and those labor laws are why our economy isn't growing. And I disagree at all, 100%. I mean, he did bring in the labor laws. That part is true. And they are starkly different to laws that we might see in America, but we are not the American economy. And here's the thing. Those laws were introduced in that first uh, term, 1994 through to 1999. And if we look at the first sort of decade of the century uh, under the Tito Mbaweni as finance minister, Trevor Manuel, sorry, Tito Mbaweni, cut, cut, Tito Mbaweni as a governor of the Reserve Bank, uh, finance minister, Trevor Manuel, President Thabo Mbeki, we were clocking 5% plus growth. We were getting budget surpluses. We were getting tax cuts. All the while, while we had these labor laws, which everyone tells you are so terrible and so destructive to growth and everything else, my view is quite simple. If you need to pay someone below a, a, a living wage for your business to succeed, you don't have a business model. Your business model is simply broken. You need to fix it. Uh, cheap labor, if that is your only edge, you don't have an edge. So uh, rip to, I suppose, the, I mean, he used to call himself the Duke of Machabas, uh, Twitter chef, retiree. He was young. He was 65. He will be greatly missed. And I think he left uh, a hugely important mark on our democracy, on our country, and on our financial services sector and labor sectors broadly. I never met him. I uh, wish I had. It kind of is one of those things where you think, well, one day I'll be a Mechabas Kloof and uh, I'll bump into the governor number eight as he liked to be preferred, uh, but it's not to be uh, a sad day for our country. Uh, let's move to Johnson & Johnson, a uh, stock I hold, and I hold it for, I suppose, a few reasons. I was, I was going to say two, but I don't know how many reasons I'm going to touch on, so let's just say I hold it. That results out, we know Johnson & Johnson, we use many of their products over time. Uh, they've had issues with some of their products uh, in the medical space, absolutely they have. But why do I hold it? For two reasons. One, it's kind of boring. It's going to give you about an 8% CAGR uh, growth in the share price per year, and then it pays about a 3% dividend. So you're effectively getting 11% a year in U.S. dollars. But look at that dividend. It just gently goes higher and higher and moving along. So you will notice it will stay flat for four quarters. They pay dividends on a quarterly basis, and they leave it unchanged for those four quarters. We have just had the second quarter results, dividend unchanged, $1.24. So you're getting nice dividend coming through, yield of around 3% at the moment, and then you're getting the share price appreciation. Share has been largely flat the last couple of years. Uh, that's fine because then you take the 3%. And, of course, it is consumer health in many ways. Um, drugs, lots of R&D and the like. And a hugely competitive space, and there are many other stocks out there, and I chat with folks whenever I tell them I like and hold Johnson & Johnson. There's always, ah, oh, what about this one? What about that one? There's loads of them. I mean, don't get me wrong. Lots of good uh, businesses out there, but it really is, I think, uh, for me, Johnson & Johnson is my pick in that space, and I love that smooth ride on dividends. It just carries on going. And I think it's an absolute thing of beauty. And, uh, well, we like some beauty in our life. But let's uh, come back to home where we had Bytes Technology Group who were doing their latest set of results. Um, and, you know, as, as is, as is uh, 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 typically the case, um, they, the, the market 
uh, really got excited, uh, sold it off, didn't like, then liked and was confused all over the place. But they operate in the UK, uh, which is a tough space to be operating. They are service provider. They, they sell hardware, but a lot of it is, is, is uh, software. Uh, they report in sterling. They get contracts which are long-term, and IFRS makes them account for them in weird ways. I'm not going to go into all the details about that. But just looking at the stock, we could see there was a, some good support around the 72, broke higher. And now we're getting a really good support level sitting at around about the 100 and 200 or so level. Now, this chart has got uh, lower highs, which is uh, undoubtedly uh, bearish. It might also, if it breaks the 100 level, have lower lows, so not rushing to buy. But I kind of like the business, and I kind of like that chart, and I think to myself, Hmm, this is not such a bad business. Dividend yield of 3.6, that's a sterling dividend. Forward PE is 20, that's not extreme. Price to book is extreme, but software companies, that's often the case because there's no book, right? There's no, there's no assets. They don't have uh, plants and equipment and buildings and that sort of thing. They've got some IP, they've probably got some offices, but there's not a lot on the, on the balance sheet as assets, so your price to book is always fairly high. So it, it's certainly a, a, a stock I'm adding onto my, let's keep an eye on it and see how it goes. I'm not sure. Uh, and for some reason, it's just there we go. It is loading that chart. Uh, the price to books actually below the mean, and so are the PEs. Uh, and if we get to the uh, analyst expectations and price targets, certainly uh, it's below the low range, which is 114. The average is 139, and the high is 154. Nine buys, uh, one hold, no sells, no strong sells. So a, a nice little business on our, on our JSC. We don't have a lot in this space. We've also got uh, locally, of course, there's Must Tech, there's EOH, uh, there's Data Tech and a few others. But I think this one is certainly a stock, uh, Foresight another. I think this is a stock certainly worth keeping an eye on. It is one I am going to be keeping an eye on, make no mistake. We got a quota uh, trading update coming out, and it was a strong update. It was Q3. This follows on from the, the half year, which was a really good set of numbers. The Q3 number Numbers, seeing really strong inflows. This is important because inflows is ultimately how they're going to make money. Quota, of course, spun out from Old Mutual. Uh, so it used to be part of Old Mutual. It's now come out and is now standing on its own. It is a sterling-based company. So again, it's going to be uh, reporting in sterling. It's game dividends in sterling. It's uh, sort of it responded well to the trading update from Wednesday, kind of in the mid-range. Uh, six holds, two buys, two strong buys, a sell, and two strong sells. So the market is unsure about it. But i got to say, yeah, nice dividend yield, almost 4%. Uh, forward PE of uh, 15, uh, price to book of 1.3, which is uh, really good for financial services. We've seen our banks running closer to about one and a half. Uh, and a chart, uh, let me pull up, I want that one there. There we go. Uh, a chart that is trading at uh, all-time highs uh, since uh, 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 listing. Uh, so it only came into market in, in, in 2018. It has broken higher. It, it closed off the highs yesterday, traded at all-time highs, but couldn't hold on. But quota also looking good. We're going to see this across the board with asset managers and the like because they're going to be probably getting some some inflows. There are the the outflows from the I mean twenty billion is already gone from the two pot, but broadly we should be seeing some inflows coming. Uh, markets moving higher. They charge a percentage of the assets under management, so higher markets mean they charge more. And then, of course, there is always that chance for performance fees, which will only add to it. So, short answer. Quota, I think, uh, looking quite decent as well. And and you can pick almost any of the asset managers. Quota, the attraction to Quota perhaps more than anything is that they are also offering in sterling. So you get a sterling dividend uh, and, and that will help over the long term as sterling sort of uh, uh, the czar weakens against sterling. A uh, couple of folks were saying, hey, Cecil, what's happening? Uh, well, what's happening is the same same as been happening forever in a day. Uh, Cecil is uh, moving lower. So that little block there, which I can, I suppose we can extend it if we want to be generous. Uh, short answer is Cecil just remains 
week. And I know there's a bunch of folks who love it, and I don't dispute the loving it. I can't get that to work nicely. It looks like it might be breaking lower. Uh, the sort of 113 level is uh, uh, 113, 114 is an important level, and it does look like it's going to be heading lower. I've said before on Cecil, it's quite simple. Wait for the technicals, wait for the chart to tell you it's time to buy. Right now, if I were to look at this chart and I had to either buy or sell, the brave person could say, well, it's bounced off here many times before, and therefore it could be going back to 120, 140, maybe even 150. That's the brave move. This is a weak chart. At this point, I would say, yeah, I'm going to wait and see. If it breaks lower, then I actually want to be shorting this. And uh, if it were to, to, to get a strong bounce, then sure, I would be long. I'm not trading Sasso either way, but uh, the Sasso chart is not thrilling me by any stretch. And then let's have a quick look at Brent. Uh, Brent, of course, spiked a whole bunch on uh, concerns around Iran and Israel and oil, uh, and it actually got to a high of 81.16 last week. Now it's back at $74.32, heading back to that 70 support. I don't expect uh, it to, 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 to uh, have much effort getting back to that 70 support. The question is, is it going to break through it? I think it might. I just think it might. The, the global economy is fine, but it's not bazooka strong. We don't have uh, a shortage of oil. America is, is producing more than they need. Uh, OPEC are cheating left, right, and center. Uh, Russia is selling, notwithstanding the sanctions. Uh, I think we have too much oil for the world right now, and I think a lower oil price is possible, which is good for us. It's good for petrol. Calculations are petrol price probably actually going up in November. Uh, 15 cents or so. Uh, that's because we've seen the rand moving weaker, and that's because we've seen uh, uh, oil uh, also stronger at one point. So maybe a slight move in petrol higher, but that will then be offset. What we will get is, I think, another cut in December. Why is the rand moving? The dollar index. It is about dollar strength again. Uh, dollar strength equals rand weakness. It keeps on getting back to this 100 level and then it bounces. This time the bounce has been fairly extreme. Um, I suppose it, it happens sometimes, but that does mean our rand, which was down at 17 just the other day, uh, what, three weeks, three and a half, two and a half weeks ago, is now 17.65. It could go back to the 18-ish level. Uh, certainly that is possible. I'm not panicking. I still think we'll see 16, 18 in the next couple of weeks or month or so. Uh, and then who knows what next. Uh, 1550 seems to be the next reasonable level in that regard. So, I mean, stuff is happening. And uh, the rand is going to be volatile. It is always going to be volatile. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Uh, that's it for this week. A, I was going to say a shorter show. It is a slightly shorter show, uh, but it should be out nice and quick. Uh, my name is Simon. As always, look after yourself. If you can, look after somebody else as well. And we will chat again next week. Remember uh, Professor Adrian Seville this evening. Uh, and then next month, we're looking at uh, the uh, SA Inc. Is There Still Space?